First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. It says, No one speaking. What's missing there?
the voice of strangers they will not follow. Verses 4 and 5. Open to that. John chapter 10, verses 4 and 5, please. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Everyone say, know his voice. Know his voice. You cannot know his voice unless you have his spirit in you. And you don't have his spirit in you because you come to church. You can only have his spirit in you when you are born again. Verse 5, please. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger. Everyone say stranger. Stranger. There are a lot of the voices of strangers on the social media. All around us. From church to church. Because not every church is a church. We have synagogue of Satan. And a lot of truth there. You wonder why is it that they are trooping to a place that is called synagogue of Satan? It's because they are deceived. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. You cannot flee from the one you don't know. If you knew the Lord and you know his voice, then you'll be able to distinguish the voice of the Lord from the voice of the stranger, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But how many of you here really know the voice of the Lord? Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. You see? You can only flee from him if you knew that that is not the Lord. So let's go back to that 1 Corinthians 12, 3. Say, no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a cost. So we want to know what does it mean to speak by the Spirit of God? How do you know if your pastor is speaking by the Spirit of God? Shouldn't you know? You can only know if you knew the Word of God. And when you flip on the channels, on the TV, saying that you are hearing gospel or Christian messages, be careful of what you are listening to. Say, so take heed what you hear. Especially when you know that even through those media, the strange voices can come. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a cost. How would they call Jesus a cost? It's from what they say about Jesus. Everything Jesus has taught, they don't follow. They turn their back at Jesus. But how can you know? We need to know how we can distinguish them. How to recognize if someone is speaking by the Spirit of God or not. What does speaking by the Spirit of God, what does it sound like? And that is why I am pouring out my heart, myself to you, to be taught the Word of God. Because I have been taught. I have a message and the message must be preached. So what does speaking by the Spirit of God mean? Speaking by the Spirit of God. Let's look at that title. Speaking by the Spirit of God, or rather I call it the oracles of God. The oracles of God. Not every believer speaks by the Spirit of God. How do you know those who are and those who aren't? How can I know who is speaking by the Spirit of God so that I will not be deceived? Why do we need to know this? To stop me from being deceived. Because that's what Paul warned Timothy. In the latter times, many will depart from what? Faith. It's not once they stop coming to church that they have departed from the faith. It's from their heart. They stop believing the truth. First, let me look at John chapter 8, verse 
31 to 32, please. John chapter 8, verse 31 to 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him. I like Jesus because he knew those who believed him from those who did not. Those that did not believe him, they deserted him. But those that believed him kept coming to him. He said, where shall we go? You are the one that have the what? The words of life. Do you really know the words of life? Have you come into contact with the word of life? <laughs> it's in your hand if you can understand it. It gives life. It gives, it gives life. Not death. So to the Jews who believed in, do you believe it? If you say you believe it, then you must do what he says. Otherwise, we know what the Spirit of God is saying. That those who speak by the Spirit of God cannot say Jesus is a cause. In other words, they cannot speak contrary to Jesus. Neither can they do contrary to Jesus. Christians cannot be cursed because they are free from the cause. But Christians can be spelled if they start believing a lie. What I'm about to say, therefore, is only to those who believe in God. Why is it important to classify the audience? Those that believe from those that don't believe. Now, he says, one who hears the word of God and receives the word of God to do what he has received is the one that believes. The one that hears the word of God and does not understand what he has said or what the word of God is saying, neither do they believe it, obviously is not a believer. So if you are here, therefore, or watching, through the same social media, you know, we can use the social media for positive vibes, and we can use it for negative things. So use your for the positive thing. Spend your time well to study the word of God. As you hear the message, look at the scripture, write things down, then you will not be deceived. Jesus said, chapter 8, pardon me, verse 31. If you abide in my word, who was he talking to? To the one that believed. You can only become a disciple when you first believe. You become a disciple with what you begin to do with what you believe. It's not every believer that is a disciple. But every believer can be a disciple when they do what they hear. <coughs> to be disciplined means that you have been taught and you, have, you put it on board, you take it on board. Like in the university, they say, what discipline are you? What are you being taught or trained in? A disciple is a, is a student under tutelage. It is true we all start as a believer, but out of the believers we now have the people that want to go the extra mile. They now want to put on board what they have been taught to put it into practice. Then they are the side. So who was he talking to? To the believers. He said, if you abide in my word, now you want to classify who is a disciple from the believers. He said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. That's why he put the word indeed there. Without any shadow of doubt. Indeed, what makes you a disciple is what you do with what you are, what you are hearing from the word of God. If you abide, that was it, abide. Abide. In my word. No, that was the message you are hearing, the word of God you are hearing, which one of them are you doing? Because if you don't do that, neither are you a believer nor a disciple. 
Hallelujah. Amen. So I believe I'm talking to people that want to do it. Amen. Next verse, please. Still talking to the same people. Who are you talking to? The disciples. And you shall know the truth. Earlier on, he said, they hear, they don't hear the voice of strangers because they don't know it. They hear the voice of the shepherd and they know his voice. And so they follow him. He's now saying that, and you shall know the truth. It's a different thing between hearing about the truth and knowing the truth. If you just hear it, it comes and goes. It comes and goes. But when you know it, it stops there. It doesn't go anywhere. It stays in you. You become a different person. Amen. You cannot be deceived. Amen. You can go to church for as long as you care for many years. Mm. If you have not known the truth, you are still under bondage. Mm. So you shall know the truth. He was talking to his disciples. Indeed, yes. those who will abide in his word. To abide means to dwell, to reside, to habitate. To engage, to reflect, to resonate the word of God with the word of God. Are you, are you get, get what I'm saying? Yes. Because each time you are doing those things, it just comes, it doesn't go out, it stays in you. Mm -hmm. And the world begins to change you. Amen. Why is it difficult for some people to forgive? Why is it difficult for some people that say they are believers to restitute? It's because the word of God is not in them. They are not abiding in the word. And so they are not disciples. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Only the truth that you know will make you free. The truth that you hear, other people say, cannot make you free. You will still be tormented by de demons in your sleep. Mm. You will still be tormented by them until you know the truth. Mm. You let the truth stay in you. Every time you hear the word of God, write it down yourself, underline in the Bible, and take it home to study it. When you hear new songs, write it down so that you can sing it to yourself again and again. Mm. You cannot give unless you have been given. You can only give what you have received. We all receive it from the Lord and so we give. Freely. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can know those who are speaking by the Spirit of God because they will always make reference to Christ. Are you with me? Yes, sir. If you abide in my word, it's if is conditional clause. So it's not saying automatically. If you have to submit yourself to abiding in God's word, then you are my disciples indeed. Here Jesus is putting eligibility to discipleship. What makes someone a disciple is the person abiding in the word of God. You think of the word of God. You don't forget the word of God. You can remember the word of God if you want to. But if you have blocked your mind that I cannot remember, then you cannot remember. Neither will you remember if, if where you are. Say, where am I now? Oh, am I here? But that's not you. You can remember it. So don't put anything in your mind that you cannot remember. That's why you're still around. It's not okay for you to call yourself a Christian if you don't meet the conditions. It's not okay for you to call yourself a disciple if you don't abide by the word of God. When they were first called Christians, the people of Antioch, that was after Jesus has been glorified. They knew them because of their behavior. They talked like Jesus. They behaved like Jesus. They dressed like Jesus. Would anybody see you today and call you a Christian? Yes. 
or just one of them that goes to church. Here, I'm teaching you how to be like Christ. If you take it, if you like take it, you don't want to take it. But that's how you know who is speaking by the Spirit of God. Jesus will always be the center point. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. How can you say you are free? It, it's not even a man. It's not a man. It's, it's the truth. That means that if I know it, I don't need to pray that God free me. <laughs> Amen? Amen? If you pray that prayer, God make me free, then you don't know the truth. Amen. What I only need to pray is that God help me to know the truth. Then I will be free. So we, we spend our time praying some useless prayer these days. Because we don't understand the scriptures. Mm. If you are born again, you don't need to pray to God that God make me free. Otherwise, God is saying you don't, you are not free. Obviously. You don't know the truth. If I say I am a child of God, that means that I have been adopted as sons of God through the blood and through the death of Christ and his resurrection. Hallelujah. And so I must operate in the same level of understanding. A lot of people that go to church today, they have been deceived. Because they don't know the truth. May you not be one of them. Amen. And if you are one of them, the panacea to uh, incarceration is what? The truth. So therefore, Jesus is saying that disciples are disciples, number one, if they live by the word of God. And number two, if they know the truth, then they are free. Another lie of the devil that they say today is generational cause or generational causes. You have been freed from generational causes. When God was saying to the, to, to, to the children of Israel, when they gave them the, the Ten Commandments, right, in Exodus chapter 20, he was saying, I will visit the sin of the Father upon the second and the third generation in whom, in those who hate me. When you are a child of God, born of God, of God you don't hate God anymore. Mm -hmm. So that generational cause cannot be on you. So a born again Christian has been free from generational causes. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. so this is what happens in that family. He runs in that family. It might run in your family, but because of you, it stopped running. Mm -hmm. Hello? Oh, yeah. Why must bad things run in your family? Mm -hmm. Why are you saved? You are saved to redeem the family. Mm -hmm. Why don't you say, wealth runs in my family. Mm -hmm. Professor, professorship runs in my family. Mm -hmm. Bishops run in my family. Why not good things that run in your family? Why is it the bad thing? Mm -hmm. It's because people that say that they are deceived. The oracles of God. The oracles of God. So it is a deception to think that since you became a born again Christian, there are some curses in your family that are affecting your destiny. You might be here, you're still thinking the same thing. So if I don't do this sacrifice, if I don't use this concussion, if I don't go back home to do the, to do the family right, then I am under the curse. You are under the cause because you have been deceived. You are under the cause because you have not known the truth. He said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. To know is to experience knowledge. That's an experiential knowledge. You shall experience this knowledge and you shall be free. You have to act knowledge. Act knowledge. Act on the knowledge. Acknowledge the knowledge. Act knowledge. Act on the knowledge. Don't just let the knowledge come and go. Act on the knowledge and you shall be free. Rather than just deceiving ourselves that I am free, when you know you are not free. Mm. You knew what happened yesterday night? You know how you slept? You know the kind of dream you had? Will that dream come to people that are free? 
So if you are thinking this way that some generational causes have an effect on you, then obviously you are not free, isn't it? It shows that you are not a disciple of Christ. A disciple of Christ will give himself herself to daily study of the Word of God. A disciple of Christ will give him or herself to daily study of the scriptures. And when other people are praying in the church, except for your own, maybe you go to work, or because you are sick at home, then you will be praying at home at the time of prayer. But if you are neither at work nor sick in your body, then you better be where others are praying. Because Jesus Christ said, we are two or three are gathered together in my name. You know it while you're not doing it. It's because you have not experienced the truth. You just have a mental accentuation of it, but not the heart. But once your heart is on fire for God, then you begin to act knowledge, you begin to act on this knowledge. There are so many things that we know, but we don't do. But what we meant is that I don't know. That's why I didn't do it. But if you really know it, then what stops you from doing it is disobedience. Because to him that know and does not do, to him it's what? Sin. So it's better to say, I don't know. Rather to say, I know. Then if you know, why are you not doing it? Then you are voluntarily, willingly disobeying God. And if you are not abiding in his word, then you are not free because you don't know the truth. Have I been speaking by the Spirit of God? Yes, yes because he's witnessing in your heart. Because I'm pointing you to God. I'm pointing you to Christ. I'm not putting a burden on you, what you cannot do. I'm telling you what Christ himself said. That if my word abide in you, then you are my disciples indeed. Let's look at the one that says generational causes. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. The second part says, For I, the Lord your God, am a generous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations, you see, of those who hate me. He is visiting the sin of the father upon the children, the third and fourth generation, on those who hate me. Haven't we know that when you are born again, you have become a friend of God? Haven't you heard that when you are born again, it's because you believe in Him? He first loved us when we were yet sinners. Is it not true that because you love God, then you ask him to be your Lord and Savior? Did anybody force you? Never you think that coming to church you are helping the pastor. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a deluded mind. You are helping yourself. Amen? Amen. Now look at it. It says, visiting the iniquity of the fathers, what does that mean? The sin of the father upon the children. This is not applicable in the new covenant. Hallelujah. Because in Ezekiel, he also told us, that, told us I believe 37 or so, he said, he said, the sin, the soul that sin, shall what? Shall die. So it's not because the father has sinned and so the children will suffer for it. In fact, in the same book, he says, just because the, the, the fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. He said, don't say these proverbs anymore. Because the soul that sin shall die. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So, generational causes cannot affect you when you are giving your heart to Christ and you are born again. Anyone that is saying it is because they don't know the truth. They have not come into contact with the truth. And so they are not free. And they say that, you should come for deliverance. Deliverance from what? <laughs> a born again Christian is not the one this is talking about. 
This Exodus 25. A born again Christian does not hate God. Does he? Therefore, God does not and cannot visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, as I begin to round up the oracles of God. Galatians 3, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord. Did you hear that? <laughs> Having become a curse for us. How? For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. As you know in those days, the thieves, no, they were crucified on the tree. They were treated with shame. And so they grouped Jesus as one of them. But in Jesus' case, he was not a thief. But that was the price he has to pay to save you and I, his blood. His life on the cross. And so it became a curse for us because it was hung on the tree. So if Jesus had become a curse for us, why would you be cursed? Hello? So why would you be going to place that, oh, it's a curse that is running my family? He cannot run. <laughs> Otherwise, Jesus, why did he die? So you choose to believe a lie rather than believe it the truth. And that speaks a lot about your personality. It speaks a lot about your integrity. Generational causes run upon those who hate God. And if you are born again in Christ, you are free from generational causes. Because Christ has redeemed us Redeemed means to purchase back, brought us back from the cops, brought us away out of the cops, and he instead became the cops. Because the sin of the world was placed upon him. He wouldn't even know sin, yet became a sin. This is the gospel of Christ that will free you. You don't need to pray that God make me free. Just pray that God open my heart to know the truth. <laughs> that is better. Because once you know the truth, you are free. Amen. So why are you putting the card before the Lord make me free? What about the truth? It's the truth that can make you free. In any area of our lives. So if you were a born again Christian, be born again. There is no facility. If you are vacillating, then you have not yet known the truth. If you are still being compelled to come for prayer meeting, you don't know the truth. If you are still being compelled to come to read your study of Bible, you still know the truth. Christ became the cause for us, for it is written, cost is everyone who hangs on a tree. So if Jesus became a cause for you, how can you be under the curse? If you are born again, you are freed from curses. Verse 14. Why did it make me free? Why did it become a curse? Though? Verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham, ever say blessing of Abraham. Blessing of Abraham. The one that Abraham blesses are mine. This is how it can be yours. And the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. The Gentiles in Christ. See? The Gentiles are the people that did not know God before. The people without God. And now in Christ Jesus, they have known God. See? Who once were not a people, the Gentiles, were now the people of God. Who had not obtained mercy, the Gentiles, but now have obtained mercy. Hallelujah. Gentiles are people like you and I that were naturally non Jews. See? But in Christ Jesus, they have become spiritual Jews. 
They are now adopted sons of God. See, they are now the children of the promise. And that's how Abraham's blessing can become our, has become our only in Christ. That the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ. Jesus, in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hmm. Verse 16, please. Now to Abraham and his seed, where the promise is made. He didn't say plural, seeds. Now to Abraham and his seed, where the promise is made. He does not say unto seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. So it's only in Christ Jesus that the promises of the promise of Abraham to bless Abraham can become yours. The oracles of God. First Peter 4, verse 11. First Peter 4, verse 11. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. See? That's why you cannot fluctuate in what you have not been anointed to do. And if you try to put on yourself what you are not given the ability to do, you'll be shamed. Pastor is preaching now according to the power given to him. A disciple can be like his master but cannot be greater than his master. So you can be like a pastor if you want. But you have to work for it. By faith. You have to understand the scripture. You have to spend quality time in prayer. And take note of the word of God. Don't argue with the word of God. See? If anyone minister, let him do it as with the ability. Everyone say ability. ability. Until you are given the ability, you are not able to do anything. You cannot even sing in the choir until you are given the ability. And those that are singing in the choir, the ability that God has given them can be increased if they have the right attitude to learn. See? I remember in those days when I was a young pastor back home in Nigeria that um, I used to interpret for guest ministers in a foreign language, English and foreign language. And the anointing was so much on me that I barely started and I was doing it better. So I now became a choice, a preferred choice by many ministers. But the one that was doing it before me there, every time they ask the person that I should interpret, you can see the person will just walk out so sorrowfully. Well now I took out my one of my daughters and I began to help her more with the other. And the attitude changed. Okay? So what is important there <coughs> is that in the house of God this way, there are different abilities that God has given us. <coughs> and you have to discover your own. Now, if you like what somebody is doing, don't be envious of them. God has given you something as well to do. He or she is doing better in that area because he or she has identified it. But God is waiting on you or yourself to identify your own gifted area. Okay? So, every one of us, we are gifted. So, here we are saying that let him do it as with the ability with God supply. Who gives the ability? God. So you pray to God, I want to understand the scripture. That's an ability. I want to memorize the scripture. That's an ability. I want to recite the scripture. That's an ability. And if God can hear prayer, God will hear your prayer. Make sure it comes from a sincere heart. And you don't just pray once. You keep praying on it. You keep praying on it. Until you see that the prayers have been answered. Many of us give up quicker. Men ought to pray without. So you hear that. 
Say, don't give up. Keep praying on it until you get it. Let him do it as with the ability with God's supplies. That in all things, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. That's how you know those who are the oracles of God. God is glorified through who? Jesus Christ. It has to be through Jesus. If you don't believe in Jesus, but you believe in God, you, have not, you are still not a believer. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except for him. Jesus paid for his, paid with his own life. That's why Jesus became the pillar stone, the cornerstone. That in all things, everyone say all things. All oh, things. Yes. Not in some things. In all things you do in your life. <laughs> Let God be glorified through Christ. Amen. Not only in the church, at home. Mm -hmm. The kind of program you watch. The kind of things you say when no one is there. Mm -hmm. How you talk to your husband. How you talk to your wife. Mm -hmm. How you talk to your children. How the children talk to their parents. Mm -hmm. Be careful because the Lord's presence is there. Mm -hmm. But you don't know. But it's there. You wait until you begin to revere, reverence God. You begin to respect God. The one you don't see. You begin to do that. Things begin to improve in your life. To whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. So you and I may speak as the oracles of God. But how do we know who is who? How can we speak without error? How can we spot errors when people are talking, especially preaching the word of God? Because they are not preaching by the Spirit of God. So if anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability. Let him do it with let him let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. That in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. So the oracles of God, in all things, God is glorified through Jesus Christ. In their behaviors, in their mannerism, in their faith, in their purpose, in their prayer life. Check what is said. Does it align with what Christ had said? That's how to know. Who is speaking as the oracles of God. But if you have not been studying the word of God and paying attention to details, will you be able to spot the wrong messages? No, you will not be. And that's why a lot of wrong doctrines are coming in. Even though you say you are saved, but you are not safe. If it's not in line with the teachings of Christ, then it is antichrist. So lastly, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge you therefore. That word charge, we need to understand what it means. To charge, not as in payment. What is a charge? But here is charge. Charge is, is giving you responsibility. I'm entrusting you with a task. This is a duty you must do. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus. He's talking to the disciple, the disciple. If you want to go far with God, I'm charging you. You know, I told you sometimes, I said, you cannot be my friend unless you follow Christ as I do. You understand the word of God, you study the scripture. See, I want to make it to heaven. You're not my friend until you start doing that. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. So you will not know from that uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5 verse 10 that we all appear before the throne judgment seat of Christ. You can see he's warning you see the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body. According to what he has done, whether good or bad. See? So every one of us will be judged according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Mm -hmm. Then you see the rich man begging Father Abraham, can you please send somebody home? First, give me a drop of water so that because this place, he, he, he was suffering there. Mm -hmm. See? 
Because what he did when he was, when he had the opportunity was bad. And so you could see where what he read. You see? Every one of us will be judged. Whether you like hiding in the church, not doing what Christ said, we will all be judged. Including the bishop and the pastors. We will all be judged. According to what we have done in this body, when we had the opportunity. Don't say, I didn't tell you. Back to 2 Timothy 4 1, please. 2 Timothy 4 1. I charge you. That sounds, that sounds like for want. Is it? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I said, for want. For want. Sound like that, like that. Did you get that or not? Yeah. Good. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead. That was the same thing that was repeated by Paul in that 2 Corinthians uh, 5.10. So, I'm charging you, therefore, you can spot the difference between those that are speaking by the Spirit of God and those who are not. Charge you to study the Scriptures properly. I'm entrusting you that you can make the, you can spot the error. You can limit the damage that has been done to the body of Christ today. Don't waste your time on those Social media that are not portraying glory to God through Christ Jesus. Verse 2, please. This is your responsibility. <laughs> preach the word. That was a preach the word. Preach the word. 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 It's for us. But the problem is, how will you preach when you don't know the word of God? You don't understand it. The problem of many is that, what will I say? And I don't blame you. Many of us are afraid to preach. We are afraid to preach the word. Yet we are charged with that task. See? Preach the word. That's why you must attend the Bible story. Very important. You need it now. Be ready. Everyone say, be ready. Be ready. How can you be ready if you are not consistent? See? If many of you don't study the word of God on a daily basis, then you are not ready. If, what, if you just put the Bible under your pillow, I think that is how it defend you. It doesn't defend anything. No! You can still have nightmares in your sleep, even with your Bible under your pillow. <laughs> on the, you will allow the word of God to dwell really in your heart. You know wisdom. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Yeah. This is how you can be made free. So, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Why is it in season when you feel like it? Why is it out of season when you don't feel like it? No. Be ready even when you don't feel like it. Be ready when you feel like it. The word. He said, convince. But well, the problem is, how can you convince when you don't understand? You see? Please, you are to convince people to turn their heart to God. You are to convince people that Jesus is Lord. You are to convince them that you are no longer under a generational cause if you are a child of God. <laughs> rebuke. Don't, don't parry them. Rebuke. He said rebuke. Tell them off if they are on the wrong path. But do it in love. Exalt. Exalt. What does that mean? Encourage. Encourage them with all long suffering and teaching. If you do this, then you are doing what Christ said we should do. It will be impossible to teach what you are not doing. And difficult to convince, especially when you don't know what to tell them. And this is why God wants you to be the oracles of God. Two points. How can you become the oracles of God? Number one, obedience to God. Acts chapter 1 verse 1, the former account I made O Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. You cannot be effective unless you are obedient to God. It is time we do this. And many of us know that we say that God is in control. 
It is true God is in control, but God does not control everything. God does not control those that disobey the word of God. Number two, not only must you be obedient to God, how can you become the oracles of God? I'm talking to those people that are really following me. Number two is effective prayer time. You cannot be praying and be listening to music. It's a betrayer of what you are supposed to be doing. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. The night hour. See? The, the hour of prayer. The man or woman that God will use as the oracles of God is one with a regular time of prayer. Don't pray if you don't want to pray. It's a waste of time. Pray if you want to pray. You see? If I were you, I want to pray. How often? Regular. How regular you seek God tells how much God is to you. I love those who love me and those who seek me early. Shall I do what? Amen. So that some time you will not find God. And that's why I want you to be regular. If you are to pray, be punctual and regular. Let us pray. I want to talk to God. I don't know which word of God has entered your heart. Let's ask Him to forgive us those areas that we have failed in, those areas that will become recalcitrant, those areas that we have persisted in. Let's ask Him to give us another chance. I want to pray. Commit yourself to God. Are you one of those people that think they are safe but not safe? You know there's fear. Fear is real to you. Fear of what runs in the family. If you're under this, then you need to ask God to forgive you. I don't want to be the same again. Your marriage can improve, you know. Your health can be better. What will happen if God speaks to you right now? What will happen if God shows you, open your eyes to see the end of things? What will happen if God open your eyes right now to show you the outcome of your travail? Yes, you can do that. And I shall pray to the man, to the young man, say, Lord, open his eyes that he will see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the Lord and he saw. Pray that God will open your eyes to see. To see as God sees. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Make Jesus your Lord and Savior. And commit yourself to him. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray.